Hi everyone, this is Lin from University of Delaware. Today my topic is about understanding the impact of encrypted DNS on internet censorship. This is a joint work with Dr. Sui Hao from Old Dominion University and Dr. Kenny Wang from Virginia Tech and Dr. Chase Gordon from University of Delaware. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I will briefly introduce the background of the encrypted DNS and the internet censorship. Then I will present two experiments. First, uh, we present our censorship observation from the encrypted DNS. And second, we evaluate how effective the encrypted DNS can be used to circumvent the internet censorship. And in the end, I'll conclude my talk. Domain name system is the fundamental system in the internet. It translates uh, domain names to IP addresses. So usually when a client visits a domain, it first sends a DNS query to the recursive resolver, which will then traverse the root server TLD server and authoritative name server to resolve the domain and send the uh, DNS response back to the client. So uh, where is the security risk of the domain name system? Actually, the DNS message is sent in plain text, so an on-pass device deployed between the client and the resolver or between the resolver and the name servers can see the queries and can manipulate the response. Uh, also, the resolver itself has the ability to do so. In order to mitigate those security risks, several encrypted DNS protocols have been proposed. And in our work, we mainly focus on the DOT and the DOH protocol because they are well standardized and they are deployed by uh, big DNS service providers. So according to their RFCs, both of them are able to prevent DNS interference from the own pass devices. Now let's see where the encryption happens. In, in the current uh, in implementation, the DOT and the DOH only secure the communication between the client and the resolver. So we can see that uh, the DNS manipulation still can be happened as the resolver or uh, on the path between the resolver and the name servers. So we can know that the encrypted DNS does provide some protections on the client, but it cannot guarantee that the client will get an authentic DNS response, especially if the resolver itself manipulates the DNS response. Uh, sensors have many ways to conduct the censorship and the DNS manipulation is one of the most popular approach. Other than that, the sensors can also examine the host header in the HTTP request and check the SNI extension during the TLS handshake. Also, the sensor can block a list of uh, IP addresses. So in this work, we're going to answer two questions. First, does the DNS manipulation happen on the use of encrypted DNS resolver? And second, does the encrypted DNS resolver help users circumvent internet censorship? Now, let's see our first experiment, censorship observation from encrypted DNS. To observe the DNS manipulation from the encrypted DNS, the high-level idea is to first collect a list of DOT and DOH resolvers, and then we send DNS queries to those resolvers. And finally, we check if the response is manipulated. To discover the DOT and the DOH resolvers, we first identify some potential resolvers. For the DOT resolvers, since it runs on port 853, so we use the Rev7 dataset to extract the IP address that have the eight, port 853 open. And for the DOH resolvers, the, the format of a DOH resolver is an, a URL. Since it's not very efficient to scan all the possible URLs to find the resolvers, we directly search for the online repository that keep checking of the uh, current DOH resolvers. Uh, after we obtain those resolvers, we will need to check if the resolvers are working correctly. So to do so, we first resolve a domain that is under our control. And if the domain, uh, if the resolver is functional, the resolver will, will then return our IP address. So in total, we uh, obtain uh, more than 6,000 of DOT resolvers and 82 DOH resolvers. Although the DOH resolvers is much less than the DOT resolvers, we, we believe that we obtained the majority of the DOH resolvers since it's already more than the resolvers collected by the IMC paper that scans billions of the URLs. 
In our experiment, there is an ethical consideration since we will use the resolvers to resolve some sensitive domains. So uh, we try our best to exclude the resolvers that could be associated with individual users. Uh, to do so, we exclude the resolvers with invalid certificates and low stability since they are not well, well maintained to be a public service which then could be associated with individual users. So for stability, uh, we test the functional of the resolver every hour for 10 days and if any test fails, uh, we exclude the resolvers. So in total, we uh, obtained 3,800 DOT resolvers and 75 DOH resol resolvers for our experiment. So uh, what domains uh, we are going to test? In our experiment, uh, our domain list consists of uh, popular domains and sensitive domains. The popular domain comes from the Alexa top 1000 domains and the sensitive domain comes from the Citizen Lab's global censorship list. Uh, after excluding some problematic domains, we have uh, 1900 domains in total. So now we resolve the domain at DOT and DOH resolvers and check if the DNS response is manipulated. And the validation process contains three steps. The first is the resource record validation. Uh, in particular, we set up a control node to resolve the domain to serve as a ground truth. If the DNS response obtained from the encrypted DNS is a DNS error message or it contains non workable IP addresses, we classify it as manipulated. However, if it contains a routable IP address and it uh, is in the same AS as the address obtained by the control node, we will classify it as not manipulated. So for other routable addresses, we will validate it through the certificate validation and uh, or the HTTP validation. For the IP address that support HTTPS, we will retrieve the certificate from the IP address and check if the certificate is valid for the domain. And for the IP address that only support HTTP, uh, we will send the HTTP request to the IP address to get the HTTP response and also we will send another HTTP request to the IP address that is locally resolved and then compare the two response to tell if the IP address is authentic. Now let's see our observation on the DNS manipulation. Uh, in total, our dataset contains 7 million DNS responses. Among them, over 100,000 of the DOT responses are manipulated and roughly 2,000 of the DOH responses are manipulated. Uh, this is a CDF of the number of manipulated responses per resolver. And in this figure, we can see that the DNS manipulations are observed from two-thirds of the resolvers and the rate is much higher than the observation from the normal open resolver, which is uh, roughly 11%. So we can see that the DNS manipulation is even more prevalent on the use of the encrypted DNS. Let's take a look at the manipulated response. In our dataset, we see multiple types of the error DNS message, such as NX domain, server failure, and refuse. And also, we see some empty records. records. The empty records has a valid DNS packet format, but does not have an IP address. And finally, we do have many uh, DNS responses contains the resolved IP address and uh, forged the public IP addresses. Then what are the IP addresses the encrypted DNS will return? Th this table lists the most frequent IP addresses that we obtained in the manipulated response. We can see that the 0000 is the most popular one for both the DOT and the DOH resolvers. And also for all the other public IP addresses listed in this table, they all serve a block page showing that the content is blocked and uh, here are the two examples of their block page. And finally, we group the manipulated responses to their providers and here is the result. We can see that more DNS manipulations are observed from the duty providers. And also for each provider, we list the top three categories of the domain that the manipulation are observed. Uh, the DOT providers tend to manipulate the domains that publish the news and uh, provide online searches and uh, proxy service. And for the DOH, the top ca categories contains the pornographies and the proxy domain. So uh, this is the uh, censorship observation from the encrypted DNS. And although the DNS manipulation is prevalent on the use of the encrypted DNS, 
not every resolver will manipulate the DNS response. So let's move to our next session, which we will try to use the uh, resolver to bypass the internet censorship. To conduct such an experiment, we first need some vantage points that suffers the DNS manipulations when non-encrypted DNS is used. Then from the vantage points, we will resolve the sensor domains from the DOT and the DOH resolvers and visit the sensor domain with the obtained IP address. For our vantage points, we need them to send plain text DNS queries and DOT DOH requests and also an HTTP and HTTPS requests. In addition, it also has an ethical consideration since all these vantage points will need to visit the sensor domain. So taking all this into consideration, we choose the VPN service from five VPN providers to conduct the experiments. And however, those VPN providers do not have a reliable service located in China, and we know that the DNS manipulation is severe in China. So we further open four cloud instances in China to conduct this experiment. With the vantage points, we need to detect what domains are experiencing DNS manipulations by the on-pass devices. To do so, we first set up a control server uh, that will reply a static DNS response to arbitrary DNS request. So then we send a DNS request from our vantage point to our control server. If there's no DNS manipulation, then we will get the static response. However, if there uh, is a on-pass device that manipulates the response, we will get the manipulated response, which will be different than our static response. So in this way, we can identify the sensor domains at our vantage points. Now we have vantage points and we know uh, the sensor domains. We will use some encrypted DNS resolvers to resolve those domains. So here we select the resolvers from three providers and those resolvers do not manipulate the DNS response. Also, we build a uh, DOT and DOH resolvers by ourselves to represent the unpopular resolvers. Then we start our circumvention experiment. So let's go through a full chart of our experiment. Uh, for a pair of domain and an encrypted DNS resolver, we first resolve the domain to get the IP address and then we determine uh, what protocol we're going to use to visit the domain. Um, here, if the website supports both HTTP and HTTPS, uh, we always favor, favor the HTTPS since most of them will redirect the HTTP to HTTPS. So for the HTTPS connections for our vantage points, we first make a TCP handshake with the IP address. So if it fails, we determine that it uh, we determine it as an IP blocking. Otherwise, we uh, continue to a TLS handshake. Uh, if the handshake fails, we determine it as an SNI blocking, and, and otherwise we send the HTTP request to get the landing page. So if we obtain an HTTP redirection response, we will find the a new location and then repeat this process. Otherwise, we conclude that the, the resolver can help the user bypass the internet censorship. Then for the HTTP connections, the process is roughly the same. Uh, besides, there is no TLS handshake and we need to check if the uh, web page is a block page. Now, let's check our circumvention results. In total, we discovered eight vantage points that suffer DNS manipulations from the on pass devices and the vantage point in China and uh, Iran observe relatively more censored domains. This table shows the circumvention rate observed from our vantage point. The dash sign means that the resolver is not reachable from the vantage point. From this table, we can see that the circumvention rate highly depends on the vantage point and can vary from 0% to 100%. While in China, the four vantage points observe almost the same set of the domains that can be uh, un unblocked by the in encrypted DNS repo. In addition, if you compare the table column by column, there is almost no difference. Uh, this means that changing DOT and the DOH resolvers does not impact the circumvention rate. Finally, we come to the conclusion. In this work, we provide two main observations. First. The DNS manipulation is prevalent on the use of the encrypted DNS, since we observed the DNS manipulation from two-thirds of the encrypted DNS resolvers. And second, the encrypted DNS resolver can be used for censorship circumvention, 
and its ability varies from vantage points to vantage points. Thanks for your watching.